Hello and welcome back to Ages in Motion. Last time, we embarked on a journey exploring the early life of a man who would leave an indelible mark on world history. A man born on a small Mediterranean island, who was destined for greatness on the grand stage of European politics. Today, we continue our exploration into the life of this extraordinary figure, Napoleon Bonaparte. At the onset of the French Revolution, Napoleon Bonaparte, a Corsican by birth and French by adoption, saw an opportunity to play a pivotal role in his homeland's politics. Corsica, an island that had been annexed by France only a few decades earlier, was at a crossroads politically and culturally, and Napoleon was deeply invested in its future. In these early years, Napoleon formed an alliance with Pasquale Paoli, the respected leader of the Corsican Republic. Paoli was a seasoned statesman and revolutionary who had initially led Corsica to a brief independence before its annexation by France. Napoleon, in admiration of Paoli, saw him as a guide who could help fulfill his dream of Corsican autonomy within the framework of revolutionary France. However, this partnership was not to last. While both men shared Corsican nationalism, their visions for Corsica's future within France were fundamentally different. Napoleon envisioned Corsica as a semi-autonomous region loyal to the French Republic, while Paoli leaned towards complete independence or potentially aligning with the British. As their disagreements became more pronounced, Napoleon's relationship with Paoli deteriorated. Matters reached a head when, in 1793, Paoli declared Napoleon and his family traitors to Corsica, forcing them to flee the island and seek refuge on the French mainland. The ostracization from his homeland was a significant turning point for Napoleon. With Corsica no longer an option, Napoleon threw himself into the maelstrom of French politics and military service, using his energy and ambition to navigate the tempestuous waters of the revolution. He devoted his energies to advancing within the French army and aligning himself with key political figures in Paris. This focus and drive set the stage for the extraordinary rise to power that would follow, transforming him from a disenfranchised Corsican nationalist into a central figure of the French Revolution. After being expelled from his homeland, Napoleon found himself back on the French mainland with his loyalties firmly redirected towards France. Eager to make his mark and prove his worth, he utilized both his military acumen and political savvy to navigate through the chaos of revolutionary France. In the midst of his adjustments, Napoleon penned a political pamphlet titled Le Super de Beaucaire, The Supper at Beaucaire. This short work presented a fictional discussion among soldiers, during which Napoleon argued passionately for the need to unite and support the revolutionary government against the counter-revolutionaries. This pamphlet, while not broadly distributed, gained the attention of several influential figures, most notably Augustine Robespierre, the younger brother of the revolutionary leader Maximilien Robespierre. Napoleon's growing reputation as a supporter of the revolution, coupled with his demonstrated strategic insight, resulted in his appointment as artillery commander for the French forces at the Siege of Toulon in 1793. This assignment was due in no small part to the influence of Christophe Solisti, a fellow Corsican and a member of the Committee of Public Safety. Toulon was a significant strategic port held by anti-revolutionary forces and a fleet of British and Spanish ships. Napoleon's innovative artillery tactics were pivotal in reclaiming the city, ousting the British forces, and bringing Toulon back under revolutionary control. This remarkable success not only marked his first significant military victory, but also led to his rapid promotion to the rank of brigadier general, underscoring his potential as a military leader. Napoleon's ascendancy, however, was not without its tests. Soon after his triumph at Toulon, he was offered an assignment with the Army of the West, an infantry force charged with quelling the royalist insurrection in the Vendée region. Despite the trust and responsibility that this command entailed, Napoleon viewed it as a downgrade from his artillery command and a potential detriment to his military career. With characteristic foresight, he declined the assignment, effectively protecting his hard-won reputation and setting the stage for the extraordinary trajectory of power that was to come. In October 1795, the political turmoil of revolutionary France once again provided an opportunity for Napoleon to distinguish himself. Royalists, longing for a return to monarchy, staged an insurrection against the National Convention, the revolutionary government of the time. Napoleon, who had been summoned to Paris by Paul Barras, one of the leaders of the Thermidorian reaction, was put in charge of the defense. Utilizing his keen understanding of artillery, 
Napoleon famously employed a whiff of grape shot, a technique that involves loading a cannon with a large number of small projectiles, effectively transforming it into a giant shotgun. His tactic swiftly dispersed the royalist forces, saving the convention and marking a significant victory for the revolutionary government. This incident, known as the 13 Vendémiaire, was pivotal in cementing Napoleon's reputation as a hero who could protect the Republic, and it solidified his rising star in French politics. While his military and political career was on an upward trajectory, Napoleon's personal life was also experiencing significant changes. He crossed paths with Josephine de Bournay, the enchanting widow of an aristocrat who had fallen victim to the guillotine during the Reign of Terror. Despite the age difference and whispers about her fidelity, Napoleon found himself irresistibly drawn to Josephine. Their courtship culminated in a marriage ceremony in 1796, a union that would become one of history's most famous and turbulent love stories. At the time of his marriage to Josephine, Napoleon Bonaparte had indeed evolved from a young Corsican nationalist, into a significant figure in the French political and military landscape. His career was now characterized by a rapid ascension within the ranks, bolstered by a series of successful military campaigns and strategic political alliances. That's it for today's episode on the rise of Napoleon Bonaparte. If you've enjoyed traveling back in time with us, don't forget to gently push the subscribe button, and also feel free to drop a comment below sharing your thoughts on today's story. In our next episode, we'll be turning the pages to Napoleon's Italian campaign, a series of epic battles that would cement his legacy as one of the world's most formidable military strategists. So stay tuned and keep your passion for the past burning bright with ages in motion. Until next time keep the wheels of time turning.